positive picture you, uh, you, you drew of the situation in Morocco. Um, uh, things have changed, yes, since 2003 we have a Royal Institute, etc. But uh, let's be clear about one thing. Uh, uh, legally speaking, as far as texts of law are concerned, nothing has changed as far as Amazigh is concerned. There isn't a single law that says if you are in a court of law, for example, uh, and you don't speak Arabic, you may um, make use of an interpreter. Um, number two, uh, you mentioned you made a good comparison with, with Algeria, but I must admit that uh, Algeria has a totally different, um, the level of awareness of the uh, Amazigh identity in Algeria is, is not to be compared with Morocco, with all respect for my uh, Moroccan uh, uh, colleagues and citizens. That's, I'm not saying it's good or bad, but the Algerians have started around 1890 with writing books about teaching Berber. And what those people ask for, the people from Kabylia, is much more than what the Moroccans in Morocco have asked for. So in, in Algeria in 1995, they got uh, the right to teach Amazir, uh, etc. I just want you to um, continue with your comparison and explain to us whether you don't think that in the future, also the Amazir question in Morocco, once it reaches that high level, of awareness, it will just stop with this kind of compromising. Why are you giving me three hours of Amazigh? I want a full program in Amazigh, for example. Uh, why isn't Amazigh recognized as an official language in the Constitution? Maybe I should give you a chance to comment on this. Thank you very much for these uh, interesting questions. I always prefer to have a positive attitude uh, rather than a negative attitude because I am uh, one of those people who look after that small light in the dark, and they follow that small light until they find their way out. So that's why I'm positive. Well, legally speaking, not much has been done. That's true. But if you look at the National Charter of Education that was uh, validated and implemented in 2000, it is mentioned explicitly that Amazigh language should be taught in Moroccan schools. And since then, Amazigh language has been introduced, at least in the primary level. That's one. Two, uh, nothing excludes that in the future, Amazigh language will be legally recognized. So I'm not pessimistic about, about the, the, fu the future. In comparison with Algeria, Moroccans, Amazigh people in Morocco, have never, been, have never felt threatened because there is a majority of Amazigh in Morocco, Amazigh people feel at home in Morocco. And historically, 90% of the population of Morocco is of Amazigh origin. The Arabs who came to conquer Morocco in the 7th and 8th centuries were only a handful soldiers and horsemen. And they were all male. The way arrived, when they arrived in Morocco, they ended up marrying Amazigh women. So we cannot say that Morocco is a purely Arab country in that sense. And Moroccans know this. They've, every Moroccan has somehow Amazigh blood. Okay? So maybe 10% are pure Arabs, but the majority are actually of Amazigh. Uh, so there's no way we can compare with Algeria. Algeria had also a bloody struggle for independence. And like Morocco, where we had negotiations, in Algeria they had, they had one million victims. In Morocco, we had a dozen victims, maybe a hundred victims, but we got our independence through peaceful negotiations. And we are still in that mood of trying to get reforms peacefully. And Morocco today is perhaps one of the few Muslim countries that have been able to achieve extremely important transformations through peaceful means, through negotiations, and through uh, political debate. And I, I hope that in the future this debate will continue and will in, will in this way avoid civil war or bloodshed. In Kabylia, people ask for more. I know that in Kabylia today there is a movement for the autonomy of Kabylia. And the Algerian government is against this, of course. But Morocco is now offering the people advanced regionalization, which is equivalent 
to autonomy for different regions in Morocco, including the Sahara. And that's a very important, uh, uh, very important political step, a very courageous political step. So I think uh, I would like to say that Moroccan people in their mindset are moderate by nature. And they prefer to go step by step instead of in, you know, venturing into radical movements which can turn into bloodshed.